Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards. I invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock every Sunday 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Today we want to give God thanks and praise for His love, mercy, and His compassion. I'm really excited. I'm happy being in the land of the living. There are so many people who are not, but we must give God thanks for being alive. When our journey has come to an end, so it's like you're in a race, and your race will come to an end. It's most of the time, you have winners, you have in between, first, second, and third, and you may see that the person come last, but at the end of the day, the race was well to run, and the fastest would have depleted, and the slowest would have come in a little later. Today, I want to thank you for this time in which we are living in. Of course, we know that Jesus is coming sooner than we think, but to tie this in with where we are at the moment, it's very touching and very much um, in a place in whereby this topic can be sensitive. My topic today, you must prepare to meet your master. You must prepare to meet your master. I'm using the, the 10 virgin, 5 were wise and 5 were foolish. And I, I, I want to use that in its context in which we must get to clear knowledge of where we are at the time. Just too long ago, somebody told me that a gentleman said, Jesus is coming this year. He did not give a day nor a time. And I find it very strange and very ticklish to the mind because the Bible said, if they tell you, lo, here is Christ, don't believe it. Or there, here is Christ, don't believe it. And many people are with the notion or with the understanding that they know when Christ will come, when Jesus Christ said, not even I know when the Father will tell me to go to collect my bride to be. In Matthew chapter 25, he said there, then the kingdom of heaven, notice what the Bible do, is using reference, people to reference concerning the kingdom of heaven. He said the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and the five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all stumbled and they slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose from their slumber or sleep, and they trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered and say, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And after came also those other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I say unto you, as the scripture is saying, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Wherein the Son of Man cometh. 
I read a lot because for us to get the juice of the message, the Bible distinctly tells us that 10 virgins. We know virgins are women or men who is not sexually contaminated, meaning their virginity remains intact, male or female. But in this case, it was all females. Females virgin that is about to accompany the bridegroom to the hall in which she will go and then get himself, not get himself ready because the bride would have already ready and the bridegroom now is going to the hall and uh, to announce to them, not even announce, but to go through the ceremony of both husbands and wife. So the Bible distinctly tell us with fair understanding that five of them were wise. But the Bible tell us of the five first foolish. Why did the Bible tell us that they were foolish? It's because the Bible wants us to know that foolish decision, ignorance of making foolish decision, it will pay at the end of those foolish mistakes. It is the same condition today with us as Christians. It is not hard to say, but it's easier to say that we live a life of common law living. We live a life of fornication. We live a life of adultery. We live a life of being naive of certain lifestyle. And yet we continue to live those lifestyle. And the, and the good thing about it, to you as an individual and to God, it's not good. You are saying God's grace and mercy will sustain me for my foolish gesture. It does not work like that. So they all would have given direction. They all would have given command because you cannot just go in a place and wait for the bridegroom to come without knowing that you are a part of that ceremony. You are a part of that bridegroom's life. In a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that they have lamps in their hand and they have extra oil that suppose, if in case they don't know what time the bridegroom will come, they will prepare themselves and get themselves ready. But the thing about they were ready. So the Bible says the five foolish have their lamps and they did not take extra oil with them. It's as though they know exactly when the bridegroom was gonna come. Today we are, we are in this dilemma, we are in this lotion, where we recognize that people think they know when Jesus is gonna come. So they live reckless life, they live anyhow, and as a result of it, they are still naive that Continue to live the way they live, and it's going to be okay. Sorry, it's not going to be okay, saints of God. When you live a life that is reckless, when you live a life that is that a life that does not please into God, you are going to be paid for it. And that's a terrible thing about it. He said, the wise, the five, five of them were wise and five were foolish. And then, the, and they that were foolish took no, took their lamps and took no oil with them. Where in the world you can know and you can know exactly when the bridegroom is coming. We have wedding for the days that are happening and sometime the groom is in the hall waiting for the wife and sometime the wife stay three, four hours and now coming or the groom, sometime a groom does not show up in a wedding while the wife is there waiting on him to be. So my thing about it is that these five foolish virgin knew that they did not know what time the bridegroom was going to come. They don't know. If they had known, they would have walked with extra oil. But the sensation of being foolish means they did not think. They has no, 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 no capacity to think and say, you know what happened? I don't know when he will come. Therefore, let me walk with extra oil. They did not do that.
They deliberately did not walk with oil because they are foolish virgins. When the Bible calls you a fool, that means you are a fool. And sometimes we as Christians, we're not supposed to tell people they are fools. Because the fool said in his heart, there is no God. And today, because of the, 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 the decision that they made, the Bible said, they, well, they took no oils, no, no oils in their lamps, but the wise took oil in their lamp vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarry, that's the important word, while the bridegroom tarry, their lamps were burning. They lower the wig, but remember if the lamps is burning, it's going to use up some of the fuel. And this is the thing about it. You started off good as a man or a woman of God. But the desires of the world, the, the worldly pleasure has caught you and put you in a place of slumberness, put you in a place of, of, of whereby you're not supposed to be. So you are more concerned about your riches, you are more concerned about making a fortune, you are more concerned about building your house, you are more concerned about so many different things and then just deny Jesus. This bridegroom is likened unto Jesus. This is likened unto Jesus, our Lord and personal Savior. You see, he will be the bridegroom to be in the future. And let me say to you, even though we, the church, is the bride, when we get before heaven, our God's focus will not be on the bride, but on the bridegroom. Because the bridegroom has pleased his dad, pleased his father. The Bible says he walks in all different types of so, testing, different types of temptation, and one of them he have not yielded to. Not one he have yielded to. Why? Because he was very, 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 very serious about his mission. And this is what life is about. So these foolish version has eliminated themselves from being in a position to escort the bridegroom into the guest chamber where he will do the necessary precaution in marrying to his bride. And the Bible said, while the bridegroom tarry, they all slumber and slept. They slumber and slept, and slept. Why? Because they was waiting for a long time. You and I know when we are in a situation and we are waiting on, on people or whatever we are doing, sometimes it goes into a doze. And sometimes that very doze can cause you to miss who you are looking for. They may pass and go on. But the Bible says they slumber and slept. They, 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 they slumber and slept. Meaning that there was a very hard, harsh environment where they sleep. Who knows, they may have snow and they could not even hear the trumpet, but they all have to hear it because they would have been looking out for someone to sound the trumpet and say, the bridegroom is coming. And I want you to understand when the bridegroom chose to come at midnight. At the midnight hour, we all will hear his cry. When the trump of God sung at the midnight hour, we all will hear his cry. And the Bible says, at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Notice the word. It's a commanding word. Go ye out to meet him. Where they were at that time. They were the ones that supposed to initiate the light. Not that Jesus soon have light. But in a case like that, the Bible is telling you that. When it says, go ye out to meet him. They all were ready to go and meet him. Because that's the purpose while they were there. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, put the wig up higher, carried up to maximum because you need light. 
to go follow your leader or the bridegroom. You notice with that you haven't seen no guests? There was no guests in that wedding. It was just the bridegroom and the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. And that command were given, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. Look at that. They know for sure that even though they try to trim the lambs and put in fluid, it was not going to last because they don't have. The Bible says the light goes out. Just imagine it's the same principle for us as Christians. You are there. You have the light. But at the last time or as the days begin to come down, when you should be serious and be more potent and more, be more cement for God, you have reasonable come to a place where you desire to backslide on God. And some people backslide on God because of a woman sex. Some people backslide on God because of challenges in the Christian fertility in the marriage. Some people backslide on God because they find themselves in poverty because of the wrong decision they make. Some people backslide on God because some brother or sister offended them. And I'm saying the word offend is used in its wrong context sometimes because they may say something to you to encourage you to go forward and you are displeased with them so you would have rather leave Christ and move on. The Bible tells us that. But the wise answer saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. These are wise in the Christian fraternity. We don't feel sorry for people's lives that are just there who have accepted Christ as personal savior for many years and they're in a backslidden state and no matter how you try to help them you will not be able to help them because their mind is already made up in doing what they think is best to do. So we need to understand very clearly that these wise virgins answer correctly. We don't have enough to share. And even though we have to share, it is enough to take us through this journey because we don't know how far the journey is from where we are going to take the bridegroom to his house. Whether it's a mile or half a mile, we don't know. And if we give you out of what we have, we all become foolish like yourself. Because even though we would have shared half of our stuff to you, we will recognize that we are not, we will not be able to follow the bridegroom through his entire mission. Why? Because the oil was only sufficient for the journey. The Holy Spirit is sufficient for our journey. Don't miss the Holy Spirit. You're living a life that is not pleasing to God. Do not miss that for me, please. And I'm here to talk a little bit about husband before I close and wife. The thing about husband and wife in these last days that we are living in, we are seeing that wives are afraid of their husband because the husband threatened them. The husband used harsh words against them. The husband make them feel less than who they are or who they is. The same thing with the female make the husband feel the same way too. Some ladies don't know how to appreciate their husband, but sometimes they make them feel less than who they are by manipulating them and doing so many different things. The Bible says that the husband must love the wife and the wife must be submissive to her husband. Today, I want to say to you, as long as you're doing that, you're in a good place, you, you can hold that position as a wise virgin. Even though you may be sexually active, spiritually I'm speaking about. The Bible would have shared with us that these say, not so. We don't have enough to share. And if we do share, 
I don't think it is wise. You should have known that those that sell down there, because you would have buy before you came to the place. Why did you not buy extra? Three things are involved, the lamps and the jar and yourself is involved. And if you don't make the necessary move to be able to get what you need to continue the journey, you are going to find yourself in deep waters. And the Bible said, now they that were ready, the bridegroom was right there, and they go and meet him, and they travel with him with the light. Even though five is eliminated, but the other five, they did an excellent job, and they are going with their master. And verse 10 said, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. So now, the wise go on with him to the marriage. The foolish now buy the oil and they are now going to where the marriage is to take place. So they reach there. They get there. And now they are about to do something that any, every person will do when they are in difficulties and when they realize they are outside and they don't know how to get in, they have to knock. And after came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. So they had to do some knocking and say, open unto us. Because we need to come in. <clears throat> Amen, somebody. So he said, open unto us. But he answered within, behind, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. The word verily means truly, truly, I say unto you, I don't know you. And this sometimes can be very tedious and very heartbreaking. For you to know that you are the end of your journey and then you would have passed off. And when you stand before God and to make all the claims and all the adjustment and to do all the things that you would have done to win his heart and to allow him to think that or the thing that you will allow him to feel guilty, his grace and his mercy. No, he's going to say one thing to you. And this is a word that much people don't know. I don't know you. You, Mr. Fornicator, who is in Christendom, or you're on the pulpit, you, Mr. Adulterer, you may be a deacon, you may be a, 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 a pastor, but you, you ring down committing adultery. Your days are coming if you don't repent. Mr. Fornicator, your days is coming if you don't repent. And you, Mr. Homosexual, who believe you are bisexual and you can do as you please, your days are coming short through. I don't know, you said Jesus. Because most of the time, these are what we do. We live life because we're so into it for so many years, we have no conviction. I hope that this message can touch you today and that you have conviction to know that you cannot be a deacon and having sexual um, perversion. You cannot be a worship leader and committing fornication. Or you cannot be a homosexual. Your life is not straight and you're in the pulpit worshiping that care work. Are you hearing me somebody today? Every sin, God will judge. If that sin is not being forgiven by acceptance of Jesus Christ, you will stand before the judgment seat of God to give account of your action. 
And Jesus made one statement as I close with this. He said, watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. This is our time. We are seeing the signs all over the world, but we don't know when Jesus is going to come. This time when he comes, no eyes will see him because that will be the sign of the rapture. But when he comes the other time, his foot will be placed at Mount Olivet, where the Jews and they will recognize they have truly crucified their Savior. So we need to watch and wait that God's purpose be done. I want to thank you wonderful people today. I want to thank the most beautiful woman of the entire world, my beloved wife, Agatha Dylan Edwards. I want to thank you all wives that are faithful to your husband. I want to thank you all husbands who are faithful to your wife. And no schema, no brawler, no hitter, no beater. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank all the husbands who big up their wives and make all things abound for their wife so all things will walk the way it's supposed to be. Touch them in the name of Jesus. And I pray, O oh God, for TIN at this time, our friends that make us look good by sharing the gospel to the entire world or for people who log in. Mighty God, I pray that you're going to strengthen Benoit and his team, Sean and his team, and you continue to spread borders wider so we will know how to walk with you and bring peace. You will give us peace, God, as we walk through this situation. Bless your people today. Minister to your people today. And I thank you for touching this broadcast. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network.